I'm going to do a uh, quick talk here on uh, Vega. Who here has heard of Vega or knows what it is? Okay, how many people here have used Vega? I've done that. This? <laughs> okay. Um, for everybody else that did not raise their hand, uh, Vagrant is like a scripted front end to VirtualBox. Uh, VirtualBox is the Sonical, Oracle, Sun, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, uh, VM environment. So it's like uh, uh, Parallels or uh, Fusion. Um, you can run Windows, you can run uh, um, Ubuntu, CentOS, whatever you want inside it. Uh, the uh, VirtualBox is open source. And it can also run in a mode that's called headless. Uh, the headless mode means that there's not actually a GUI. Uh, there's just a process running that has your server in it. Uh, Vagrant gives you a nice environment to actually uh, work in that. So you can use this to uh, create a, a box in Ubuntu, uh, for example, that has Django already installed on it, has your project ready to go, uh, and your, your setup. Uh, one of the cool things it does, besides actually managing, spinning that up, and uh, the provisioning for you, uh, is it, it integrates with Chef and, and or Puppet, whichever one you want to uh, use to actually handle creating your uh, environments. You can install processes and uh, uh, packages and things like that. Um, it'll also let you set up uh, uh, shared uh, folders between the, the VM and your host OS. So you can have a folder in your machine that you can edit and, and make changes to, and it'll show up in the uh, virtual machine at the same time. Um, it's a really easy way to sort of package up, this is my environment. So you have your web environment that you, you deploy your apps in, and here's a VM that everybody can use. So instead of them having to go find all the packages they need to install, uh, they can just fire up this Vagrant box and they've got everything you need. Um, the URL, uh, which I don't know if you guys can see that really well, is uh, vagrantup.com. Um, has pretty good documentation and, and gets you started. Uh, this is a Ruby application, uh, so if you want to use it, you do need to have Ruby installed. Nobody's ported it to Python, but um, it's not all that difficult to get installed. Um, so, let's see here. I don't want Django, I want this one. Um, everything that I'm talking about here is actually on GitHub. Uh, you can go to GitHub, uh, there's a README that sort of goes through some of the stuff I'm talking about now uh, and will get you started. Um, and the Vagrant file, um, I was going to create one, but since we're running a little late, I'm just going to go ahead, we'll walk through the one that I've uh, already created, and then I'll show you bringing up a uh, Vagrant environment and things like that. Um, Um, everything happens inside these, uh, a file called a Vagrant file. Um, you can pretend this isn't Ruby if you like. Uh, you can just say that this is a special scripting language that, that Vagrant only can read. Um, but uh, the idea is you, uh, you set up the, the box you want to use. Um, here I'm just using straight up Ubuntu. Um, I have a 1104 uh, 32-bit um, box. Uh, that this would download if I didn't already have it locally um, when I go and, and start to uh, boot this up. Uh, the Vagrant file, it, it is Ruby, so you can execute whatever you want, but basically you just put whatever you want on this uh, uh, configure thing. The first thing is to the, the name of the box you want to use. Um, Vagrant uses this concept of a box to uh, handle the, the uh, VM. You can think of it sort of as a packaged up uh, uh, virtual environment. Uh, that it can then expand and turn into an actual virtual machine. Um, so I have this one, I'm just naming it based off the version number of Ubuntu I'm using and that it's 32-bit. Um, optionally here you can set the URL. Um, scroll off. Um, so this is just the URL that it'll grab it from if you don't actually have a box named 1104.32. Uh, I've got this one up on S3, which is just a bare bones uh, Ubuntu server. Um, the next thing, optionally, you can set the uh, configuration. Let me move this up a little bit so everybody in the back can see it. Um, you can set the network that you want it to be on. Uh, this is an IP address that's accessible from my host machine here on my Mac. So I can, I can actually ping and SSH into uh, 333310. Um, if you don't do that, 
uh, the only thing that will be accessible is the things that you forward from localhost. So by setting this line here, uh, the first parameter there, HTTP, is just the name of what port I'm forwarding. Uh, the second parameter is the name of the port on the uh, localhost. Uh, 8000 is the default Django uh, run server host. So I'm saying anything that's on uh, port 8000 of the, the uh, virtual environment, I want to be able to access on my host machine, my Mac here, as localhost port 8080. Um, so we'll see that in a few minutes once we've got this set up. Um, I'll be able to go to localhost port 8080 and actually hit a Django project that's running inside the VM. Um, as for sharing folders, you do that here with the share folder. Uh, first value again is just a key internally to sort of say what this is. Um, in this case, I have the Django project, which I'm going to put in the, ho the, home, uh, the Vagrant home directory slash project. Uh, Vagrant boxes by convention have a user called Vagrant uh, that's automatically configured. So just inside that home directory, I'm going to put dot project. And if you look here, inside my project, I have what you'll recognize as a pretty standard uh, start project uh, skeleton. Uh, so this dot project directory is going to be shared into my virtual environment uh, when we create it. Um, I've also added a packages directory. Uh, in that, all I have is uh, the Django so it doesn't have to download it all again. Um, pretty simple stuff there. Oh, let's see, what other configurations do I have down here? Um, so I'm using Puppet for the configuration. Um, I, and you call this provision uh, function here. You say what type you want to do. Um, Puppet uses a, pro a process called manifests. And I'm just saying this is the path to where those manifests are. And I want to use the Django.pp, which is its extension for a, a Puppet file. Um, so if I switch over to manifests Django. Um, Again, like I said, this is all on GitHub, so you guys can go through this uh, at your leisure and, and take a look at it. Um, I have some scaffolding he here at the top that I can't quite get on one page. Uh, this is just to get Python set up uh, and get pip installed, so I can actually start pip installing stuff. Um, down here, I actually have Django, which will call, it's actually just an execute. This is like running a shell script against uh, pip, telling it to install the slash the uh, home slash vagrant slash packages slash the Django tarball, um, and it requires that pip is installed before it can actually run. Uh, so as it brings everything up, um, it'll then install Django, and then once I can log into the box, I'll have uh, Django already installed. Uh, this line here at the bottom, uh, the include Django, is just saying now run that class actually for me. Um, so that's the Vagrant file uh, in a very uh, quick nutshell. Um, so if I come in here, um, this is the directory we're in. Um, we have the uh, Vagrant file right there. And if I type Vagrant up, this will take just a couple of minutes as it imports this box, hopefully a few seconds. Um, I really wanted to bring my iMac in here for this because I have a really beefy iMac about 100 feet that way. <laughs> but this takes about 15 seconds and it's done. Uh, from start to finish. Um, actually, well, this is, since we are running a little bit on, close on time, I'm going to stop that. So if you, once this is booted up, it'll go through the process of installing everything. And I actually think that might not have worked because it's going to use apt get the internal system on Ubuntu to download everything. And when I tried earlier, the Wi-Fi here was a little flaky. Um, so it would have actually died trying to do that because it does need a network connection. It's actually going to run apt get just like you would uh, inside a, a, a new uh, a server as you bring it up. Um, but once you've got all that done and you've gone through all the setup and you've created that uh, everything that's inside that manifest and you've got a running box, uh, there's a VM running, you can actually package it up. Um, and I've also packaged that up. Uh, when I ls the directory up here, you can see that I have a vagrant.django. Um, this is a, an alternate uh, Vagrant file that I created. Um, file type. Okay, um, this one's been stripped down just a little bit. Um, but you can see my box here I've, I've listed as uh, Django 1.3. Um, 
And then down here at the URL, I don't know how many people paid attention to the URL earlier, but this is a little bit different. Uh, same domain and everything, but we're using the Django 1.3.box instead. So this is a, a packaged version of, of what the normal Vagrant file creates. So once I create that, I can package this up, upload it to a server that anybody can access, they can download it, and everything's already running. So if I start this box, I'll already have uh, Django installed and all of the Python packages and Git and so on uh, are already installed for me. So if when I, you say run that box, is that, is that actually continue to talk to the Amazon? No, it it'll actually download it locally, and then once it's got a copy locally, um, it'll expand it and turn it into what VirtualBox okay. expects. Okay. Pass that in and start that up as a VM. Cool. So, do you know if there are any hosting providers that allow you to, you know, give them a pre-set up box essentially to run? Them? No, there's a couple of people though that uh, well actually, or a couple of scripts out there that'll take that box and sort of you've got a, a VirtualBox VM, so anywhere that you could run. Uh, virtual box or uh, yeah, virtual box. You could take that VM, give it to that person, and you're set. Yeah. Um, there, there are some uh, projects on GitHub that are taking the idea of the Vagrant file and then turning that into something that could run on say EC2, and it does the provisioning, talk to the EC2 box, put Puppet on it, put Chef on it, whichever one you're using, um, and then do all the installation for you. So you could bring a box up like that um, in the same fashion. Uh, but nobody that'll actually say, here, run this box, yet. Uh, I think you might start to see that. It's like, here, give us this Vagrant file, and we'll run it. Because all you have to do is have a uh, virtual box installed on your servers, and, and the ability to trust whoever you're going to give a VM, or get a VM from. So inside here, if I run Vagrant up, uh, this will take, hopefully, less than 30 seconds. Um, this is box 11 before, instead of Django. Yeah. Uh, Did you see me? No, you're right. Um, thank you. So if I go back into Django, uh, this directory here, I've taken, this has the vagrant file.django just renamed as vagrant file. Uh, vagrant assumes that there's always going to be a file called the vagrant file, and it will run that regardless of, of what's there. So in this case, you can copy that vagrant file.django into a new directory and put a project directory that has some sort of project you want to share with the uh, virtual machine in your set. Okay. There we go. Thanks for catching that. Um, so. <clears throat> um, one of the, the cool things about uh, Vagrant, um, let's create a new one. Um, one of the things it'll let you do, uh, there's a command called vagrant init. Um, so once you get vagrant installed, um, so that all you have to do, once you can call uh, vagrant, which I have that inside my uh, seven vagrant gym set here. Uh, once you can call vagrant, it'll give you the list of the commands that you can run. Um, and foobar, vagrant foobar2. <laughs> So if I call vagrant init right here, uh, this will create a base vagrant file for you. Uh, and when you go in to actually edit that, um, it has all the documentation that my vagrant file had. That's what's generated for you by default. So it'll say, okay, here you go. And it gives you a little bit of an explanation about what this should be um, and gives you a default. Um, it tells you right here what the URL is and that's commented out. So you can could, you could uncomment that and put the vagrant box in you want. Um, so it's kind of self-explanatory once you know what it's going to create. So Vagrant in it will get you sort of pointed in the right direction. Um, let's check back in on this. Oh, seriously? Let's try this one more time and we'll see if it works. If not, you guys are going to have to trust me that, that the other one works. <laughs> I did test the .django Vagrant file on the other machine, but not this one. Right. So. This is running kind of fast. You don't have to use it. Not this one on this, on, not on this machine. It's on that machine. <laughs> I think it might still be running on my iMac. <laughs> Can you SSH to that? No, separate networks. Yeah. I figured you had the back first somewhere on the network. Oh, or crystal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 99%.
Maybe. There we go. We're good. Does that model have to do with this file copy? So it starts back at one, though. Yeah. So the box that I'm actually using here is the Ubuntu server um, was something that I created. Uh, in, on the Vagrant Up site, uh, there's actually really good documentation. Um, and it talks about building what they call base boxes. Um, and base boxes are the boxes you build to build things on top of. So like that's the starting points, like my uh, the 110432 box. Um, and I actually created that. And it took maybe about 30 minutes once I got everything downloaded. It, it's not very complicated at all. And the documentation here is pretty straightforward. Where, there's my mouse. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It walks you through everything you would need to do to create a base box like what they expect, uh, like what Vagrant expects. Okay, so this is now running. So if I come over here, come on. It's like I mess this into this thing. Says this is H. That that that's this box. Um, Django. So another one of the commands that you have in, in Vagrant is uh, SSH. So I'm going to SSH into this box. And what? Are you in a different environment? Just start again. Yeah. Yes, I am. There we go. Okay, now I'm actually on my Ubuntu box. RVM like virtual manager? Yeah, RVM is the Ruby version manager, so it's like virtual inf plus uh, virtual inf wrapper all in one. Um, but yeah, it lets you segregate things. Um, Okay, so you can see here I've got the two directories. Uh, package was shared now. Yeah, there's nothing in package. Um, but if I look in projects, I've got all of my project stuff right here. So if I come back over to the Vagrant version of this, um, <laughs> yeah, that's actually exactly what I'm going to do. So I come in here, and if I use hash from Mac. So now I have my from Mac file. When I come into here, oops. Project. My from Mac file is there. Um, so anything that you edit uh, on the Mac side, which is what this is, uh, as you can tell by the prompt, um, will show up inside the Ubuntu box at the same time. So that means basically you can use your normal text editor, your, all your normal workflow stuff uh, to edit files you can do inside your native uh, um, environment, your native OS. Uh, but everything is running and is accessible at the same time uh, over in your virtual machine. So if I come into here, python manage.py run server um, 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 8000. Uh, so basically there I'm just telling you I want run server to run, but I want it to bind to every port that's coming in. If I've just bound it to localhost, um, my uh, VM, or my host, the host OS here, uh, Mac, wouldn't know how to access it because it's actually bound to the public uh, network card of the the uh, VM inside of Ubuntu. So I run this standard run server stuff here. Uh, so that's available. Actually, just to prove that this is actually running localhost 88. Uh, there's nothing there, so I'm not running this locally on in another uh, process somewhere on my machine. So. <laughs> so I come here. Now we've got it running here. It's listening to everything on port 8000. So when I go to localhost port 8080, I get the congratulations, it worked. This is the standard uh, Django uh, page you'll get when you run uh, start project and there are no URLs configured. Now I can show. So if I come back over here to my editor. Uh, projects. So if I get rid of, if I do the auto discover on admin, which doesn't really have anything, and I uncomment out the admin stuff here, now this, this uh, window here, my editor, is what I'm editing on my local box. So when I come back over to this and reload it, 
Now you can see uh, it's improperly configured because I didn't have it in my installed apps. Um, but you, so you can see, yeah, I'm, I'm doing all the editing uh, on the, the uh, Mac side, but it transitions over at the same time. Um, this can do a lot more than just something simple like this. Um, one of the things you'll notice is this line right here, define. You can add as many defines as you want. So I just have to, I've defined Django at this point. Um, I could define DB, I could define Django 2, and I could define load balancer. And my load balancer could spin up Nginx that's going to look at the IP addresses that I set. So I set 10 and 11 as my Django 1 and Django 2. And then those are configured, the code that it's going to put on those, know that the, the database is going to be on 33, 33, 33, 20. That's where my database will be. Um, and now I've spun up a 4 VM cluster that this is actually running. Uh, so you can take this in and scale it up to a really complex environment um, and be able to duplicate what you would have in production. Uh, so you can have your search uh, server, you can have your, uh, your uh, celery uh, workers running uh, and things like that uh, and not have to have somebody figure out how to get it running on the environment that they want. Uh, uh, Vagrant and VirtualBox will run on Linux, uh, OS X and Windows um, and can run anything that uh, you want to create a box of. Generally, it's, it's Linux stuff that you're creating a box of. Uh, but the environment that you put in production can be the same environment that you put, uh, that you develop on, just in a virtual, um, uh, a virtual environment. Um, are there any questions? Yeah. So I'm a vagrant skeptic. Okay. <laughs> uh, are you a vagrant skeptic or a skeptic or a virtualization skeptic? Well. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, right? Okay. Because it seems like there's a lot of, I mean, it seems like really powerful. Yeah. It also seems like there's just so much state that you have to keep, like, even before you get to, like, working on your, your app, right? Like, when you're, if you set up your local environment, you do it once, you know, and, and maybe use virtual end to, to manage stuff. But, like, this just seems like so much state to remember that there's, like, you know, a, a number of servers, like, virtual servers running and which one am I using. And, yeah. You know, just, like, yeah, is it is it worth it in the end? I mean, and, and at what point does it become worth it? Like, what size project? What complexity project? You know? um, I think it's worth it uh, from the start. Uh, the genesis of the idea for creating this box right here, just the basic. Now I've got Django. It's installed. Everything I need is there. Uh, was somebody that we had at the uh, Tribune who wanted to get started learning Django. But it's like, okay, how do you give them something that they can just start working in? Uh, they're familiar enough with Linux to know their way around SSH, um, but they have all their editing tools, things like that, that they're used to. Uh, so being able to take something as simple as just this one box and say, here, get Ruby installed, get Vagrant installed, here's the instructions for going and doing that. Copy in this one Vagrant file and this one directory, and then you can type Vagrant SSH, CD into your project directory, and now you can use manage.py, create your uh, new apps, and go to town. Cool. And the, the example you used, you were using a puppet file to get everything configured, right? And so hypothetically, you could have that same puppet yeah. file be setting up your production environment. Sure. So now you're testing literally on this exact same stuff on a production environment your dev lines. That's the, the larger larger picture beyond the, the simple case like this. Um, if you write your puppet file properly, which is a whole other uh, talk in and of itself, uh, you can take that puppet file, and that's the same thing you use to deploy your service. Uh, so you have one file to do that. I was talking with Brett earlier, and he was actually said he was using Vagrant a lot today to test puppet files that they use uh, at Discuss. So Vagrant worked as a sort of a test bed for him to spin up a VM and test it before he tried it out on a live system. Well, another use case, I mean, if you want to have uh, like Discuss would be really useful in a situation where you have a, a bunch of different things that work where basically we had to create our, our own configuration module that allowed people to have one piece of hardware because we didn't have the ability to use Windows and have, uh, well, I guess we're stuck on Windows and didn't have the ability to set up multiple, uh, the actual production environment locally. So had one piece of hardware that we had to set up a configuration file with all the appropriate variable calls to uh, Apache variables to uh, loading, uh, I guess we're, it was a combination of Perl and Python, mm -hmm. but 
this would give us the ability to literally replicate the production environment on a, on a machine versus having to pretend to and create a whole bunch of workarounds, a whole bunch of code sure. around yeah. pretending to be in the right environment and allow multiple developers to be on the same box. Yeah, we've had a, a we've hired, brought on two new people since I've been at the Tribune, and both of them have lost a day entirely uh, just setting up the environments. Yeah, but aren't they so the, if you could give them this, a day getting bigger and set up too. No. no. And are the they going to run out of RAM trying to run all these versions? <laughs> I think the difference is when you add something, like this week I added Scribe to discuss, and we have only nine developers, but the other eight people would be fucking confused. Like there's eight dependencies. They yeah. all change. They come to work, they get full, big enough, got it. Like, because if you're if you only need Django and you're done, then you got the coolest business ever. But if like, <laughs> if, like every two months, you're going to be adding some new dependencies, some crazy yeah. Yeah. C Python library that you need, like the worst, or weirdest dependencies ever. So like that's the huge selling point for me. And I, I think we're a small team. We should ignore like our scale on that. Like it's only like eight other people, so it's it's hugely like the best thing we've done in six months is the they're going to help it stay in production and VMs and stuff like that. It's the other thing that's really cool about this, so yeah, there's a lot of states that are like what VM am I in, things like that. Um, right here, I've got it running uh, in Activity Monitor. You can see it's using 21 threads, 1% uh, of the CPU, and it's got uh, 250 megs uh, to, to run the one VM. Um, if I come over here and I type, do you, do you have eight gigs right now? Um, I have four on this one. Um, so I type Vagrant Suspend. Um, and at this point, this is what you would do if you were suspending a VM inside a virtual box or you're, you're pausing a VM inside uh, Ubuntu or stuff. So I come back over here and all of that's gone. Like now nothing is gone or nothing is, is running. I have no idea. <laughs> but now I type Vagrant up and all it's got to do is a resume. Everything was exactly where I left it right, right. and it just resumes. Um, okay, it's still up. I don't know if I actually have big or Django still up. I think it does. Yeah, if I would have spawned it off, then yeah, yes, it would have worked. Or something. Um, wow, something is definitely pegging my CPU. That's for sure. But now it's back, and no, it's gone. But if I actually had that running on something where it would, uh, if I was using Upstart, for example, to keep it up, um, then it would be good. Uh, the other uh, other cool thing beyond like being able to develop on is if you wanted to demo uh, a project, um, to be able to say, here's what you do to demo it, you type Vagrant up, and now you've got everything configured that you would need. Because uh, it's very rare that a project is just the uh, just Django. Like you need Django, you need a database, you might need a uh, a worker queue, you might need a search index, um, you cache a load balancer in front of it, um, all those different things. Um, and this lets you sort of script that. Yeah, there is a little bit of overhead and, and picking whether or not you want to use Puppet or Chef and learning how to use one of those definitely uh, does have some overhead. But I think the the uh, end result is definitely worth. Do you find that you need to do like one project per VM? Like yeah. If you work on a multiple project at the same time, maybe they have similar environments. You're not going to share a VM. You're going to have. I'm going to have bigger environments. Yeah, so I would treat I treat a, a vagrant environment like I would treat a virtual environment on my local machine. Like it's it is its environment. Like I in the the script I installed I installed pip and then Django lo, uh, globally. And like everything I would have installed I would have installed globally and my virtual inf became the VM. Like I don't even have a need for that at that point because sure. my VM all it's running is this one project. And then what happens like you know package upgrades like you've got. You're maintaining 30 virtual environments now. You know, 30, 30 but that's, VMs, right? that's the same thing you would run into if you were doing, uh, if you had, uh, say, um, uh, virtual. If you had virtual imp and each one of your projects had its own virtual imp, when you go into that, okay, which version do I want to run? Oh yeah, but that's but that's like at the at the Python package level. Yeah, I'm OS talking about now the OS package level, right? Like you've got a whole system that you're yeah that you're maintaining and per project, which is more overhead. It, it is. Um, for the most part, I'm okay, until I have a problem that's a problem, I'm okay with it being, with trusting Ubuntu to not release and disable the things that are going to break me. Well, you can maintain one master copy and keep updating it. Yeah. Another you could create a, a new base box that's basically, this is my starting point. 
Uh, so like I have this one I created that is that is the uh, 1104. You can create one yourself, that's your base box. Everything else pulls off of that and then builds on top of that. And that base box, so say all of yours are gonna have Python, they're all gonna need Git, um, and they're all gonna need, um, I don't know, some, some other random package. Uh, you want the, the packaged version of Nginx. Um, your base box could do that. You package that up, and then all of your other projects just put their specific code uh, inside that. So. Uh, I was actually curious about that. So you have the, you have the projects inside your directory. There's nothing special about it being in that directory that required uh, in order to be shared in the virtual environment. Is there? Or no, I could have shared it. Shared just put any path. The, the whole idea here is I wanted to actually have something I could commit into right. Git and put onto GitHub. Okay. And ideally, if, if you're doing something like this, you'd have a, a directory or a path or something like that that you'd be putting in some sort of version control mm -hmm. um, and committing it. So normally it's, a, it's local. Mm -hmm. uh, some sort of local directory is what you choose. Okay. But yeah, nothing special about that. It could have been a path anywhere on my system. Have you used uh, Sahara at all? Sahara? Oh, no, I have not. A colleague of mine told me about it. It's a, it's really, I think it's a plugin for Vagrant that okay. allows you to sort of snapshot, uh, sandbox your mm -hmm. Your setup. So, you, say if you if you want to uh, install something new, I think you could say try it out. But if that didn't work, you can do say rollback. Sort of. You know, I back, think I came across that the other back. day uh, looking at some vagrant stuff, but I have not used it. You really need that people of abstraction. No. <laughs> like it just, point of, just well, the idea is that you could create the base box that you have that has the base yeah. things you want, and then start playing around with it. And you're like, okay, I want to upgrade Nginx and see if it works with the new version because I know the previous version had a bug in it. So I create this snapshot, which you can create a, a full package at that, or a full box at that point, calling Vagrant package. Um, but this will create a snapshot for you. You can just roll back. It's sort of automated. And but you, you got to build some infrastructure. I think I see the useful there. And you're trying to upgrade something, but oh, that didn't work. Let me just go back to where I was. So, the, uh, the other thing you have to remember is that that Vagrant is Ruby, so they really like their abstractions. <laughs> um, so you do end up with a couple of. Layers of things. Do you play through without saving your game, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just disabled. Nobody so doesn't play his games in virtual machines. That's right. <laughs> um, any other questions? That's pretty fun. How big is it if you have Um, Let's go look. And a kind of other question. I mean, uh, they also have uh, what are we talking about? Them? That's Amazon AMI files. Yeah. So could this have anything? I, I vaguely recall seeing somebody that had taken a project to turn a virtual box um, um, VM into uh, an AMI, and Brett's shaking his head back there that he's seen this too, so I don't think I'm imagining things. So yeah, you could take the running box that you create, turn that into an AMI, put that on S3, and then boot from it. Well, why not just work with an AMI? But, 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 but you just run public on EC2. You already have something that I assume makes an instance, right? You already have pub scripts for Vagrant. Just treat Vagrant like run server and ESC2 like Apache, right? Like they're these separate pieces, you don't use one for the other, but you have Puppet on top of both or Chef. Right. You just run Puppet. You're done. Um, I'm going to have to quote it from memory, where my memory stick went to. Um, I don't know where I put these. <laughs> <laughs> um, the. Uh, I, I have them on a, mem a USB drive around here somewhere uh, that ha actually has the boxes. I think my uh, my base Ubuntu one is like 440 megs, 450 megs, and I think it was like 17 megs more to install all of the Python dev tools, Git, and uh, um, Django, um, and the stuff that it needed for my uh, package. Uh, so it's significant it's not something that's going to transfer over uh, edge really easily um, but yeah uh, it's not it's not horrible it's, you're not talking gigs so I have a question on that why did you decide to make a new base box instead of just using starting with the 1104 plane and then just running a script? there wasn't one when I wrote this a couple wrote, wrote it originally a couple months ago okay they like there just wasn't the the base lucid 32 that that vagrant was shipping was the LTS version, so 1004. And I could have done that. There was no particular reason okay. other than I wanted to be on okay. uh, latest. Because that's, that's kind of a selling point to me. Is it's, if, I don't know, my work uses Lucid and I don't know, a friend uses Lucid. Eventually, a lot of people I know are going to have this 
base box, which is literally just the Ubuntu ISO. And then someone just has to give me a 1K script, and I already have that base that just installs yeah. on top of Another thing you have to be careful with, uh, Vagrant Boxes here has a lot of them listed. Um, and they, I have, I've tried the 64-bit one because I saw, ooh, somebody finally did it. I tried it. Um, they only installed Chef. So none of my public scripts would work because they were a Chef shop and they didn't want to, to bloat it by putting uh, 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 Puppet on there. Um, mine, even though I use Puppet, I followed the directions on Vagrant Up and put everything on there. So it has both of them. You could run Chef. You could run uh, Puppet on. Uh, but yeah, you can see, if you go to Vagrant Box, you can search. Uh, there's not a ton of them. Um, what percent of them are also open internet relays? Yeah, that I don't know. <laughs> um, these two here, 32 and 64, those are the sort of base ones that uh, Vagrant ships. Um, what happens and, when VirtualBox goes away? When VirtualBox goes away? Yeah. I don't or think it will. <laughs> um, oh, that's it's it's actually a project that was, as I understand it, was one of the Sun employees just sort of trying to make VirtualBox more usable. So Oracle owns the copyright of it, but it's a pretty liberal uh, license. I don't even think this is CDDL. I think it's MIT. When VirtualBox is, VirtualBox is Oracle. Oh, when VirtualBox goes away. Oh, not Vagrant. Um, then somebody would rewrite Vagrant, which is open source, to work on one, one of the other. It would work on VMware. Uh, instead of uh, VirtualBox. Because I mean, all it is is it's a thin wrapper around yeah. doing all the stuff that VirtualBox could do. So you could, people are, are taking the same syntax and some of the same code and making it work on EC2. Um, so you could make it work with VMware. Yeah, any virtualization environment could, could be made to run. Any other questions? Yeah, so if not, I will not keep you from beer. So. Dave McLean won.